The England cricket team represents England and Wales and, until 1992, also Scotland in international cricket. Since 1 January 1997 it has been governed by the England and Wales Cricket Board ECB, having been previously governed by Marylebone Cricket Club MCC from 1903 until the end of 1996. England, as a founding nation, is a full member of the International Cricket Council ICC with Test, One Day International and 2020 International status. England and Australia were the first teams to play a test match between 15 to 19 March 1877 and these two countries together with South Africa formed the Imperial Cricket Conference predecessor to today's International Cricket Council on the 15th of June 1909. England and Australia also played the first ODI on the 5th of January 1971. England's first T20I was played on the 13th of June 2005 once more against Australia. As of 26 November 2018, England has played 1,007 test matches, winning 364 and losing 298 with 345 draws. The team has won the Ashes on 32 occasions. England has played 721 Otis, winning 360, and its record in major ODI tournaments includes finishing as runners-up in three Cricket World Cups 1979, 1987 and 1992, and in two ICC Champions Trophies 2004 and 2013. England has also played 105 T20As, winning 50. They won the ICC World 2020 in 2010, and were runners-up in 2016. As of 28 November 2018, England are ranked second in tests, first in Otis and third in T20 as by the ICC. Though the team and coaching staff faced heavy criticism after their group stage exit in the 2015 Cricket World Cup, it has since adopted a more aggressive and modern playing style in ODI cricket, under the leadership of Captain Owen Morgan and head coach Trevor Bayliss. History The first recorded incidence of a team with a claim to represent England comes from 9 July 1739 when an All England team, which consisted of eleven gentlemen from any part of England exclusive of Kent, played against the unconquerable county of Kent and lost by a margin of very few notches. Such matches were repeated on numerous occasions for the best part of a century. In 1846 William Clark formed the All England Eleven. This team would eventually compete against a united All England Eleven with annual matches occurring between 1847 and 1856. These matches were arguably the most important contest of the English season if judged by the quality of the players. Topic Early tours The first overseas tour occurred in September 1859 with England touring North America. This team had six players from the All England eleven, six from the United All England eleven, and was captained by George Parr. With the outbreak of the American Civil War, attention turned elsewhere. English tourists visited Australia in 1861 62 with this first tour organised as a commercial venture by Messrs Spears and Pond, restaurateurs of Melbourne. Most matches played during tours prior to 1877 were against odds, with the opposing team fielding more than 11 players to make for a more even contest. This first Australian tour were mostly against odds of at least 18 elevens. The tour was so successful that George Parr led a second tour in 1863-64. James Lillywhite led a subsequent England team which sailed on the P&O steamship Puna on 21 September 1876. They would play a combined Australian eleven, for once on even terms of eleven aside. The match, starting on 15 March 1877 at the Melbourne Cricket Ground came to be regarded as the inaugural Test match. The combined Australian eleven won this Test match by 45 runs with Charles Bannerman of Australia scoring the first Test century. At the time, the match was promoted as James Lillywhite's 11 v combined Victoria and New South Wales. The teams played a return match on the same ground at Easter, 1877, when Lillywhite's team avenged their loss with a victory by four wickets. The first test match on English soil occurred in 1880 with England victorious, this was the first time England fielded a fully representative side with W.G. Grace included in the team. Topic. 1880s. 
England lost their first home series 1–0 in 1882 with the Sporting Times printing an obituary on English cricket In affectionate remembrance of English cricket, which died at the Oval on 29 August 1882, deeply lamented by a large circle of sorrowing friends and acquaintances RIPNB the body will be cremated and the ashes taken to Australia. As a result of this loss the tour of 1882–83 was dubbed by England captain Evo Bly as the quest to regain the ashes. England with a mixture of amateurs and professionals won the series 2–1. Bly was presented with an urn that contained some ashes, which have variously been said to be of a bale, ball or even a woman's veil and so the ashes was born. A fourth match was then played which Australia won by four wickets but the match was not considered part of the Ashes series. England would dominate many of these early contests with England winning the Ashes series ten times between 1884 and 1898. During this period England also played their first test match against South Africa in 1889 at Port Elizabeth. Topic 1890s England won the 1890 Ashes series 2–0, with the third match of the series being the first test match to be abandoned. England lost 2–1 in the 1891–92 series, although England regained the urn the following year. England again won the 1894–95 series, winning 3–2 under the leadership of Andrew Stoddart. In 1895–96 England played Test South Africa, winning all tests in the series. The 1899 Ashes series was the first tour where the MCC and the counties appointed a selection committee. There were three active players, Lord Hawke, W. G. Grace and Herbert Bainbridge who was the captain of Warwickshire. Prior to this, England teams for home tests had been chosen by the club on whose ground the match was to be played. England lost the 1899 Ashes series 1–0, with W. G. Grace making his final test appearance in the first match of the series. Topic 1900s. The start of the 20th century saw mixed results for England as they lost four of the eight Ashes series between 1900 and 1914. During this period, England would lose their first series against South Africa in the 1905–06 season 4–1 as their batting faltered. England lost their first series of the new century to Australia in 190–02 Ashes. Australia also won the 1902 series, which was memorable for exciting cricket, including Gilbert Jessop scoring a test century in just 70 minutes. England regained the Ashes in 1904 under the captaincy of Plum Warner. R. E. Foster scored 287 on his debut and Wilfred Rhodes took 15 wickets in a match. In 1905–06 England lost 4–1 against South Africa. England avenged the defeat in 1907, when they won the series 1–0 under the captaincy of R.E. Foster. However, they lost the 1909 Ashes series against Australia, suing 25 players in the process. England also lost to South Africa, with Jack Hobbs scoring his first of 15 centuries on the tour. 1910s. England toured Australia in 1911–12 and beat their opponents 4–1. The team included the likes of Jack Hobbs, Frank Woolley, Sidony Barnes and Wilfred Rhodes. England lost the first match of the series but bounced back and won the next four tests. This proved to be the last Ashes series before the war. The 1912 season saw England take part in a unique experiment. A nine-test triangular tournament involving England, South Africa and Australia was set up. The series was hampered by a very wet summer and player disputes however and the tournament was considered a failure with the Daily Telegraph stating Nine tests provide a surfeit of cricket, and contests between Australia and South Africa are not a great attraction to the British public. With Australia sending a weakened team and the South African bowlers being ineffective England dominated the tournament winning four of their six matches. The Australia v South Africa match, at Lords, was notable for a visit by King George V, the first time a reigning monarch had watched Test cricket. England would go on one more tour against South Africa before the outbreak of World War I. England's final tour before the outbreak of World War I saw England beat South Africa 4 0. 
Sidney Barnes took 49 wickets in the series. Topic: 1920s. England's first match after the war was in the 1920-21 season against Australia. Still feeling the effects of the war England went down to a series of crushing defeats and suffered their first whitewash losing the series 5-0. Six Australians scored hundreds while Maley spun out 36 English batsmen. Things were no better in the next few Ashes series losing the 1921 Ashes series 3-0 and the 1924 -5 Ashes 4-1. England's fortunes were to change in 1926 as they regained the Ashes and were a formidable team during this period dispatching Australia 4-1 in the 1928-29 Ashes Tour. On the same year the West Indies became the fourth nation to be granted test status and played their first game against England. England won each of these three tests by an innings, and a view was expressed in the press that their elevation had proved a mistake although Leary Constantine did the double on the tour. In the 1929-30 season England went on two concurrent tours with one team going to New Zealand who were granted test status earlier that year and the other to the West Indies. Despite sending two separate teams England won both tours beating New Zealand 1-0 and the West Indies 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> The 1930 Ashes series saw a young Don Bradman dominate the tour, scoring 974 runs in his seven test innings. He scored 254 at Lords, 334 at Headingley and 232 at the Oval. Australia regained the Ashes winning the series 3-1. As a result of Bradman's prolific run scoring the England captain Douglas Jardine chose to develop the already existing leg theory into fast leg theory, or bodyline, as a tactic to stop Bradman. Fast leg theory involved bowling fast balls directly at the batsman's body. The batsman would need to defend himself, and if he touched the ball with the bat, he risked being caught by one of a large number of fielders placed on the leg side. Using his fast leg theory England won the next Ashes series 4-1. But complaints about the bodyline tactic caused crowd disruption on the tour, and threats of diplomatic action from the Australian Cricket Board, which during the tour sent the following cable to the MCC in London. Bodyline bowling assumed such proportions as to menace best interests of game, making protection of body by batsmen the main consideration. Causing intensely bitter feeling between players as well as injury. In our opinion is unsportsmanlike. Unless stopped at once likely to upset friendly relations existing between Australia and England. Later, Jardine was removed from the captaincy and the laws of cricket changed so that no more than one fast ball aimed at the body was permitted per over, and having more than two fielders behind square leg was banned. England's following tour of India in the 1933-34 season was the first test match to be staged in the subcontinent. The series was also notable for Morris Nichols and Nobby Clark bowling so many bouncers that the Indian batsmen wore solar toppies instead of caps to protect themselves. Australia won the 1934 Ashes series 2-1 and would keep the urn for the following 19 years. Many of the wickets of the time were friendly to batsmen resulting in a large proportion of matches ending in high-scoring draws and many batting records being set. England drew the 1938 Ashes, meaning Australia retained the urn. England went into the final match of the series at the Oval 1-0 down, but won the final game by an innings and 579 runs. Len Hutton made the highest ever test score by an Englishman, making 364 in England first innings to help them reach 903, their highest ever score against Australia. The 1938-39 tour of South Africa saw another experiment with the deciding test being a timeless test that was played to a finish. England lead 1-0 going into the final timeless match at Durban. Despite the final test being timeless, the game ended in a draw after 10 days as England had to catch the train to catch the boat home. A record 1,981 runs were scored, and the concept of timeless tests was abandoned. England would go in one final tour of the West Indies in 1939 before World War II, although a team for an MCC tour of India was selected more in hope than expectation of the matches being played. Topic: 1940s. 
Test cricket resumed after the Second World War in 1946, and England won their first match back against India. However, they struggled in the 1946–1947 Ashes series, losing 3–0 in Australia under Willie Hammond's captaincy. England beat South Africa 3–0 in 1947 with Dennis Compton scoring 1,187 runs in the series. The 1947–48 series against the West Indies was another disappointment for England, with the side losing 2–0 following injuries to several key players. England suffered further humiliation against Don Bradman's Invincible in the 1948 Ashes series. Len Hutton was controversially dropped for the third test, and England were bowled out for just 52 at the Oval. The series proved to be Bradman's final Ashes series. In 1948–49, England beat South Africa 2–0 under the captaincy of George Mann. The series included a record-breaking stand of 359 between Len Hutton and Cyril Washbrook. The decade ended with England drawing the Test Series against New Zealand, with every match ending in a draw. Topic: 1950s. Their fortunes would change in the 1953 Ashes tour as they won the series 1-0. England would not lose a series between their 1950-51 and 1958-59 tours of Australia and secured famous victory in 1954-55 under the captaincy of Peter May, thanks to Frank Typhoon Tyson, whose 6-85 at Sydney and 7-27 at Melbourne are remembered as the fastest bowling ever seen in Australia. The 1956 series was remembered for the bowling of Jim Laker who took 46 wickets at 9.62 which included bowling figures of 1990s at Old Trafford. After drawing to South Africa, England defeated the West Indies and New Zealand comfortably. The England team would then leave for Australia in the 1958–59 season with a team that had been hailed as the strongest ever to leave on an Ashes tour but lost the series 4–0 as Richie Benno's revitalised Australians were too strong, with England struggling with the bat throughout the series. On 24 August 1959, England inflicted its only 5–0 whitewash over India. All out for 194 at the Oval, India lost the last test by an innings. England's batsmen Ken Barrington and Colin Cowdery both had an excellent series with the bat, with Barrington scoring 357 runs across the series and Cowdery scoring 344. Topic: 1960s. The early and middle 1960s were poor periods for English cricket. Despite England's strength on paper, Australia held the Ashes and the West Indies dominated England in the early part of the decade. Peter May stood down as captain in 1961 following the 1961 Ashes defeat. Ted Dexter succeeded him as captain but England continued to suffer indifferent results. In 1961-62 they beat Pakistan, but also lost to India. The following year saw England and Australia tie the 1,962 thirds Ashes series 1-1, meaning Australia retained the urn. Despite beating New Zealand 3-0, England went on to lose to the West Indies, and again failed in the 1964 Ashes, losing the home series 1-0, which marked the end of Dexter's captaincy. However, from 1968 to 1971 they played 27 consecutive test matches without defeat, winning 9 and drawing 18 including the abandoned test at Melbourne in 1970-71. The sequence began when they drew with Australia at Lords in the second test of the 1968 Ashes series and ended in 1971 when India won the third test at the Oval by four wickets. They played 13 tests with only one defeat immediately beforehand and so played a total of 40 consecutive tests with only one defeat, dating from their innings victory over the West Indies at the Oval in 1966. During this period they beat New Zealand, India, the West Indies, Pakistan and, under Ray Illingworth's determined leadership, regained the ashes from Australia in 1970-71. Topic. 1970s The 1970s, for the England team, can be largely split into three parts. The early 70s saw Ray Illingworth's side dominate world cricket winning the Ashes away in 1971 and then retaining them at home in 1972. 
The same side beat Pakistan at home in 1971 and played by far the better cricket against India that season. However, England were largely helped by the rain to sneak the Pakistan series 1-0 but the same rain saved India twice and one England collapse saw them lose to India. This was, however, one of if not the strongest England team ever with Boycott, Edrich, De Oliveira, Amis, Illingworth, Knott, Snow, Underwood amongst its core. The mid-1970s were more turbulent. Illingworth and several others had refused to tour India in 1972-73 which led to a clamour for Illingworth's job by the end of that summer. England had just been thrashed 2-0 by a flamboyant West Indies side, with several England players well over 35. Mike Dennis was the surprising choice but only lasted 18 months, his results against poor opposition were good, but England were badly exposed as ageing and lacking in good fast bowling against the 1974-75 Australians, losing that series 4-1 to lose the Ashes. Dennis was replaced in 1975 by Tony Gregg. While he managed to avoid losing to Australia, his side were largely thrashed the following year by the young and very much upcoming West Indies for whom Gregg's infamous Gravel. Remark acted as motivation. Greg's finest hour was probably the 1976-77 win over India in India. When Greg was discovered as being instrumental in World Series cricket, he was sacked, and replaced by Mike Burley. Burley's side showed again the hyperbole that is often spoken when one side dominates in cricket. While his side of 1977-80 contained some young players who went on to become England greats, most notably future captains Ian Botham, David Gower and Graham Gooch, their opponents were often very much weakened by the absence of their World Series players, especially in 1978, when England beat New Zealand 3-0 and Pakistan 2-0 before thrashing what was effectively Australia's second 11 5-1 in 1978-79. topic 1980s The England team with Burley's exit in 1980 was never truly settled throughout the 1980s which will probably be remembered as a low point for the team While some of the great players like Botham Gooch and Gower had fine careers the team seldom succeeded in beating good opposition throughout the decade and did not score a home test victory except against Minnows Sri Lanka between September 1985 and July 1990 Botham took over the captaincy in 1980 and they put up a good fight against the West Indies, losing a five-match test series 1-0, although England were humbled in the return series. After scoring a pair in the first test against Australia, Botham lost the captaincy due to his poor form, and was replaced by Mike Burley. Botham returned to form and played exceptionally in the remainder of the series, being named man of the match in the third, fourth and fifth tests. The series became known as Botham's Ashes as England recorded a 3-1 victory. Keith Fletcher took over as captain in 1981, but England lost his first series in charge against India. Bob Willis took over as captain in 1982 and enjoyed victories over India and Pakistan, but lost the Ashes after Australia clinched the series 2-1. England hosted the World Cup in 1983 and reached the semi-finals, but their test form remained poor, as they suffered defeats against New Zealand, Pakistan and the West Indies. David Gower took over as skipper in 1984 and led the team to a 2-1 victory over India. They went on to win the 1985 Ashes 3-1, although after this came a poor run of form. Defeat to the West Indies dented the team's confidence, and they went on to lose to India 2-0. In 1986 Mickey Stewart was appointed the first full-time England coach. England beat New Zealand, but there was little hope of them retaining the Ashes in 1986-87. However, despite being described as a team that can't bat, can't bowl and can't field, they went on to win the series 2-1. After losing consecutive series against Pakistan, England drew a three-match test series against New Zealand 0-0. They reached the final of the 1987 World Cup, but lost by seven runs against Australia. After losing 4-0 to the West Indies, England lost the Ashes to a resurgent Australia led by Alan Border. With the likes of Graham Gooch banned following a rebel tour to South Africa, a new-look England side suffered defeat again against the West Indies, although this time by a margin of 2-1. Topic. 1990s 
If the 1980s were a low point for English Test cricket then the 1990s were only a slight improvement. The arrival of Graham Gooch as captain in 1990 forced a move toward more professionalism and especially fitness though it took some time for old habits to die. Even in 2011, one or two successful county players have been shown up as physically unfit for international cricket. Creditable performances against India and New Zealand in 1990 were followed by a hard-fought draw against the 1991 West Indies and a strong performance in the 1992 Cricket World Cup in which the England team finished as runners-up for the second consecutive World Cup, but landmark losses against Australia in 1990-91 and especially Pakistan in 1992 showed England up badly in terms of bowling. So bad was England's bowling in 1993 that Rodney Marsh described England's pace attack at one point as pie throwers. Having lost three of the first four tests played in England in 1993 Graham Gooch resigned to be replaced by Mike Atherton. More selectorial problems abounded during Atherton's reign as new chairman of selectors, coach Ray Illingworth then into his 60s assumed almost sole responsibility for the team off the field. The youth policy which had seen England emerge from the West Indies tour of 1993-94 with some credit though losing to a seasoned Windies team was abandoned and players such as Gatting and Gooch were persisted with when well into their 30s and 40s. England duly continued to do well at home against weaker opponents such as India, New Zealand and a West Indies side beginning to fade but struggled badly against improving sides like Pakistan and South Africa. Atherton had offered his resignation after losing the 1997 Ashes series 3-2 having been 1-0 up after two matches, eventually to resign one series later in early 1998. England, looking for talent, went through a whole raft of new players during this period, such as Ronnie Irani, Adam Holyoke, Craig White, Graham Hick, Mark Ramprakash. At this time, there were two main problems. The lack of a genuine all-rounder to bat at six, Ian Botham having left a huge gap in the batting order when he had retired from tests in 1992. Alex Stewart, a sound wicket-keeper and an excellent player of quick bowling, could not open and keep wicket, hence his batting down the order, where he was often exposed to spin which he did not play as well. Alex Stewart took the reins as captain in 1998, but another losing Ashes series and early World Cup exit cost him test and ODI captaincy in 1999. This should not detract from the 1998 home test series where England showed great fortitude to beat a powerful South African side 2-1. Another reason for their poor performances were the demands of county cricket teams on their players, meaning that England could rarely field a full-strength team on their tours. This would eventually lead to the ECB taking over from the MCC as the governing body of England and the implementation of central contracts. 1992 also saw Scotland sever ties with the England and Wales team, and begin to compete independently as the Scotland national cricket team. By 1999, with coach David Lloyd resigning after the World Cup exit and new captain Nasser Hussain just appointed, England hit rock bottom literally ranked as lowest rated test nation after losing in shambolic fashion to New Zealand 2-1. Hussain was booed on the oval balcony as the crowd jeered, We've got the worst team in the world to the tune of, he's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> 2000s Central contracts were installed, reducing players' workloads, and following the arrival of Zimbabwean coach Duncan Fletcher, England thrashed the fallen West Indies 3-1. England's results in Asia improved that winter with series wins against both Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Hussain's side had a far harder edge to it, avoiding the anticipated greenwash in the 2001 Ashes series against the all-powerful Australian team. The nucleus the side was slowly coming together as players such as Hussain himself, Graham Thorpe, Darren Goff and Ashley Giles began to be regularly selected. By 2003 though, having endured another Ashes drubbing as well as another first-round exit from the World Cup, Hussain resigned as captain after one test against South Africa. Michael Vaughan took over, with players encouraged to express themselves. England won five consecutive test series prior to facing Australia in the 2005 Ashes series, taking the team to second place in the ICC Test Championship table. During this period England defeated the West Indies home and away, New Zealand, and Bangladesh at home, and South Africa in South Africa. 
In June 2005, England played its first ever T20 international match, defeating Australia by 100 runs. Later that year, England defeated Australia 2-1 in a thrilling series to regain the Ashes for the first time in 16 years, having lost them in 1989. Following the 2005 Ashes win, the team suffered from a spate of serious injuries to key players such as Vaughan, Flintoff, Giles and Simon Jones. As a result, the team underwent an enforced period of transition. A 2-0 defeat in Pakistan was followed by two drawn-away series with India and Sri Lanka. In the home test series victory against Pakistan in July and August 2006, several promising new players emerged. Most notable were the left-arm orthodox spin bowler Monty Panesar, the first Sikh to play test cricket for England, and left-handed opening batsman Alistair Cook. The 2006–07 Ashes series was keenly anticipated and was expected to provide a level of competition comparable to the 2005 series. In the event, England, captained by Flintoff who was deputising for the injured Vaughan, lost all five tests to concede the first Ashes whitewash in 86 years. In the 2007 Cricket World Cup, England lost to most of the test-playing nations they faced, beating only the West Indies and Bangladesh, although they also avoided defeat by any of the non-test-playing nations. Even so, the unimpressive nature of most of their victories in the tournament, combined with heavy defeats by New Zealand, Australia and South Africa, left many commentators criticising the manner in which the England team approached the one-day game. Coach Duncan Fletcher resigned after eight years in the job as a result and was succeeded by former Sussex coach Peter Moores. In 2007–08, England toured Sri Lanka and New Zealand, losing the first series 1–0 and winning the second 2–1. These series were followed up at home in May 2008 with a 2-0 home series win against New Zealand, with the results easing pressure on Moores, who was not at ease with his team, particularly star batsman Kevin Peterson. Peterson succeeded Vaughan as captain in June 2008, after England had been well beaten by South Africa at home. The poor relationship between the two came to a head on the 2008–09 tour to India. England lost the series 1-0 and both men resigned their positions, although Peterson remained a member of the England team. Moores was replaced as coach by Zimbabwean Andy Flower. Against this background, England toured the West Indies under the captaincy of Andrew Strauss and, in a disappointing performance, lost the Test Series 1-0. The 2009 Ashes series featured the first Test match played in Wales, at Sophia Gardens, Cardiff. England drew the match thanks to a last-wicket stand by bowlers James Anderson and Monty Panesar. A victory for each team followed before the series was decided at the Oval. Thanks to fine bowling by Stuart Broad and Graham Swan and a debut century by Jonathan Trott, England regained the Ashes. Topic 2010s. After a drawn Test series in South Africa, England won their first ever ICC World Championship, the 2010 World 2020, with a seven-wicket win over Australia in Barbados. The following winter in the 2010-11 Ashes, they thrashed Australia 3-1 to retain the urn and record their first series win in Australia for 24 years. Furthermore, all three of their wins were innings victories, the first time a touring side had ever recorded three innings victories in a single Test series. Alistair Cook earned man of the series with 766 runs. England struggled to match their test form in the 2011 ICC Cricket World Cup. Despite beating South Africa and tying with eventual winners India, England suffered shock losses to Ireland and Bangladesh before losing in the quarter-finals to Sri Lanka. However the team's excellent form in the test match arena continued and on 13 August 2011, they became the world's top-ranked test team after comfortably whitewashing India 4-0, their sixth consecutive series victory and eighth in the past nine series. However, this status only lasted a year, having lost 3-0 to Pakistan over the winter, England were beaten 2-0 by South Africa, who replaced them at the top of the rankings. It was their first home series loss since 2008, against the same opposition. This loss saw the resignation of Strauss as captain and his retirement from cricket. His replacement, Alistair Cook, who was already in charge of the ODI side, led England to a 2-1 victory in India, their first in the country since 1984-85. 
In doing so, Cook became the first ever captain to score centuries in his first five tests as captain and became England's leading century maker with 23 centuries to his name. After finishing as runners-up in the ICC Champions Trophy, England faced Australia in back-to-back -back Ashes series. A 3-0 home win secured England the urn for the fourth time in five series. However, in the return series, they found themselves utterly demolished in a 5-0 defeat, their second Ashes whitewash in under a decade. Their misery was compounded by batsman Jonathan Trott leaving the tour early due to a stress-related illness and the mid-series retirement of spinner Graham Swan. Following the tour, head coach Andy Flower resigned his post whilst batsman Kevin Peterson was dropped indefinitely from the England team. Flower was replaced by his predecessor Peter Moores, but he was sacked for a second time after a string of disappointing results including failing to advance from the group stage at the 2015 World Cup. He was replaced by Australian Trevor Bayliss who oversaw an upturn of form in the ODI side, including series victories against New Zealand and Pakistan. In the Test Arena, England reclaimed the Ashes 3-2 in the summer of 2015. Topic. Recent results Topic. Forthcoming fixtures As set out by the ICC's Future Tours programme, below is England's full international fixture list until the end of the 2019 season. The venues for the home games are in brackets. Winter 2018-19 Jan to March, English cricket team in the West Indies in 2018-19 for three tests, five Otis and three T20 Isummer 2019. May, English cricket team in Ireland in 2019 for one ODI. May, Pakistani cricket team in England in 2019 for five Otis, Bristol, Riverside, Headingley, the Oval and Rose Bowl, and one T20I, Sophia Gardens. May to July, 2019 Cricket World Cup in England and Wales Lords Final, Edgybaston and Old Trafford Semi-Finals, The Oval Opening Game, Bristol, Sophia Gardens, Riverside, Headingley, Rose Bowl, Taunton and Trent Bridge Group Games July, Irish Cricket Team in England in 2019 for one four-day test Lords August to September, 2019 Ashes Series, five tests Edgybaston, Lords, Headingley, Old Trafford and The Oval Governing body The England and Wales Cricket Board is the governing body of English cricket and the England cricket team. The board has been operating since 1 January 1997 and represents England on the International Cricket Council. The ECB is also responsible for the generation of income from the sale of tickets, sponsorship and broadcasting rights, primarily in relation to the England team. The ECB's income in the 2006 calendar year was £77 million. Prior to 1997, the Test and County Cricket Board TCCB was the governing body for the English team. Apart from in Test matches, when touring abroad, the England team officially played as MCC up to and including the 1976 77 Tour of Australia, reflecting the time when MCC had been responsible for selecting the touring party. The last time the England touring team wore the bacon and egg colours of the MCC was on the 1996-97 tour of New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Status of Wales Historically, the England team represented Great Britain in international cricket, and Scottish or Welsh national teams played sporadically. Scotland became an independent member of the ICC in 1994, having severed links with the TCCB two years earlier. Criticism has been made of the England and Wales Cricket Board using only the England name whilst utilising Welsh players such as Simon Jones and Garrett Jones. With Welsh players pursuing international careers exclusively with an England team, there have been a number of calls for Wales to become an independent member of the ICC, or for the ECB to provide more fixtures for a Welsh national team. However, both Cricket Wales and Glamorgan County Cricket Club have continually supported the ECB, with Glamorgan arguing for the financial benefits of the Welsh county within the English structure, and Cricket Wales stating they are committed to continuing to play a major role within the ECB. 
The absence of a Welsh cricket team has seen a number of debates within the Welsh Senate. In 2013 a debate saw both Conservative and Labour members lend their support to the establishment of an independent Welsh team. In 2015, a report produced by the Welsh National Assembly's Petitions Committee, reflected the passionate debate around the issue. Bethan Jenkins, Plaid Cymru's spokesperson on heritage, culture, sport and broadcasting, and a member of the Petitions Committee, argued that Wales should have its own international team and withdraw from the ECB. Jenkins noted that Ireland with a population of 6.4 million was an ICC member with 6,000 club players whereas Wales with 3 million had 7,500. Jenkins said, Cricket Wales and Glamorgan CCC say the idea of a Welsh national cricket team is an emotive subject, of course having a national team is emotive, you only have to look at the stands during any national game to see that. To suggest this is anything other than natural is a bit of a misleading argument." In 2017, the First Minister of Wales, Carwin Jones called for the reintroduction of the Welsh one-day team stating, it is odd that we see Ireland and Scotland playing in international tournaments and not Wales. <laughs> team colours England's kit is manufactured by New Balance, who replaced previous manufacturer Adidas in April 2017. When playing Test cricket, England's cricket whites feature the Three Lions badge on the left of the shirt and the name and logo of the sponsor NatWest on the right. English fielders may wear a navy blue cap or white sun hat with the ECB logo in the middle. Helmets are also coloured navy blue. Before 1997 the uniform sported the TCCB Lion and Stumps logo on the uniforms, while the helmets, jumpers and hats had the three Lions emblem. In limited overs cricket, England's ODI and 2020 shirts feature the NatWest logo across the centre, with the three Lions badge on the left of the shirt and the New Balance logo on the right. In Otis, the kit comprises a blue shirt with navy trousers, whilst the 2020 kit comprises a flame red shirt and navy trousers. In ICC Limited Overs tournaments, a modified kit design is used with sponsors' logo moving to the sleeve and England printed across the front. Over the years, England's ODI kit has cycled between various shades of blue such as a pale blue used until the mid-1990s, when it was replaced in favour of a bright blue with the occasional all-red kit. In Test cricket, England recently drew criticism for wearing mismatched cream shirts and white jumpers. International grounds Listed chronologically in order of first match and include neutral fixtures such as World Cup and Champions Trophy games. Tournament history Host country ICC Cricket World Cup Topic ICC Champions Trophy Known as the ICC Knockout in 1998 and 2000 Topic ICC World 2020 Topic Honours ICC World twenty twenty one twenty ten Topic Records Topic Test matches Topic Test team records Highest team total, 903-7 deck v. Australia at the Oval in 1938 Lowest team total, 45 v. Australia at Sydney in 1886-87 England are the only team in the history of Test cricket to have secured 100 victories by an innings. Test individual records 
Most matches, 161 tests, Alistair Cook Longest serving captain, 59 tests, Alistair Cook Test batting records Most runs, 12,472 Alistair Cook Best average, 60.73 Herbert Sutcliffe Highest individual score, 364 Len Hutton v Australia at the Oval in 1938 Record partnership, 411 Colin Cowdery and Peter May v West Indies at Edgybaston in 1957 most centuries, 33 Alistair Cook England's most prolific opening partnership was Jack Hobbs and Herbert Sutcliffe. In 38 innings, they averaged 87.81 for the first wicket, with 15 century partnerships and 10 others of 50 or more. Most ducks, 30 Stuart Broad. Topic. Test bowling records most wickets, 565 James Anderson Best average, 10.75 George Lohman Best innings bowling, 10 53rds Jim Laker v Australia at Old Trafford in 1956 Best match bowling, 1990ths Jim Laker v Australia at Old Trafford in 1956 Best strike rate, 34.1 George Lohman Best economy rate, 1.31 William Atewell Five England bowlers have taken four wickets in an over, three of these at Headingley. They were Maurice Allam v New Zealand at Christchurch in 1929-30, Kenneth Cranston v South Africa at Headingley in 1947, Fred Titmus v New Zealand at Headingley in 1965, Chris Old v Pakistan at Edgybaston in 1978 and Andy Caddick v West Indies at Headingley in 2000. Test fielding records Most catches by an outfielder, 175 Alistair Cook Most dismissals as wicketkeeper, 269 Alan Knott Most dismissals in an innings, 7 Bob Taylor v India at Bombay in 1979-80 Most dismissals in a match, 11 Jack Russell v South Africa at Johannesburg in 1995-96 Test record versus other nations <laughs> One-day internationals <laughs> ODI team records Highest team total, 481 sixths 50 overs v Australia at Nottingham in 2018 Lowest team total, 86 32. 4 overs v Australia at Old Trafford in 2001 Topic. ODI individual records Most matches, 197 Paul Collingwood Longest serving captain, 90 matches, Owen Morgan. Topic. ODI batting records Most runs, 5,813 Owen Morgan Best average, 51.52 Joe Root Best strike rate, 116. 97 Yosh Butler Highest individual score, 180 Jason Roy v Australia at Melbourne Cricket Ground in 2018. Record partnership, 256 Asterisk Alex Hales and Jason Roy v Sri Lanka at Edgybaston in 2016. Most centuries, 13 Joe Root. Most ducks, 13 Marcus Trescothic and Alex Stewart. Topic. ODI bowling records. Most wickets, 269 James Anderson Best average, 19.45 Mike Hendrick Best bowling, 631sts Paul Collingwood v Bangladesh at Trent Bridge in 2005 Best strike rate, 32.7 Andrew Flintoff Best economy rate, 3.27 Mike Hendrick 
ODI fielding records Most catches by an outfielder, 108 Paul Collingwood Most dismissals as wicketkeeper, 178 Yosh Butler most dismissals in a match, 6 Alex Stewart v Zimbabwe at Old Trafford in 2000, Matt Pryor v South Africa at Trent Bridge in 2008, Yosh Butler v South Africa at the Oval in 2013. <laughs> ODI record versus other nations T20 internationals Where applicable, a minimum of 10 innings batted or 50 balls bowled applies. Figures include games up to 27 October 2018. <laughs> T20I team records Highest team total, 238ths v. South Africa at Mumbai in 2016 Lowest team total, 80 v. India at Colombo RPS in 2012 Topic T20I individual records Most matches 77 Owen Morgan Longest serving captain 34 matches Owen Morgan Topic T20I batting records Most runs, 1,734 Owen Morgan Best average, 37.93 Kevin Peterson Best strike rate, 145. 11 Jason Roy Highest individual score, 116 Asterisk Alex Hales v Sri Lanka at Chittagong in 2014 Record partnership, 159 Alex Hales and Ravi Bopara v West Indies at Trent Bridge in 2012 most centuries, 1 Alex Hales Most ducks, 9 Luke Wright T20I bowling records Most wickets, 65 Stuart Broad Best average, 16.84 Graham Swan Best bowling, 4 tenths Ravi Bopara v West Indies at the Oval in 2011 Best strike rate, 10.80 Mark Wood Best economy rate, 6.36 Graham Swan T20I fielding records Most catches by an outfielder, 34 Owen Morgan Most dismissals as wicketkeeper, 25 Yosh Butler most dismissals in an innings, 4 Matt Pryor v South Africa at Cape Town in 2007. T20I record versus other nations Most England appearances These lists show the 10 players or those tied for 10th with the most appearances for England in each form of the game. The lists are correct up to the 15th of October 2018. Denotes players who are available for selection and have represented England in the format during the past 12 months. Topic: <laughs> Personnel Topic. Squad This lists all the active players who have played for England in the past year since the 28th of November 2017 and the forms in which they have played, and any players in italics outside this criteria who have been selected in the team's most recent squad. It does not include Alistair Cook, who played tests until September 2018, as he has retired from international cricket. The ECB offers a number of central contracts in September each year to England players whom the selectors think will form the core of the team. Players can now gain contracts for test and white ball limited over cricket and in some cases both. Other players who play enough games during the year can also gain incremental contracts. Key S. N equals shirt number 
C T equals contract type test white ball incremental C equals captain V C equals vice captain equals Topic coaching staff equals head coach Trevor Bayless assistant head coach Paul Farbrace batting coach test Mark Rampercosh batting coach ODI and T2OI Graham Thorpe fast bowling coach Chris Silverwood spin bowling consultant Sacklin Mushtaq fielding coach Carl Hopkinson Topic England men's cricketer of the year At the start of each season the ECB present the England Men's Cricketer of the Year award to recognize outstanding performances in all formats of international cricket over the past year. Voted on by members of the cricket media. The previous winners of this award are 2006-07, Andrew Flintoff 2007-08, Ian Bell 2008-09, Kevin Peterson 2009-10, Graham Swan 2010-11, Jonathan Trott 2011-12, James Anderson 2012-13, Matt Pryor 2013-14, Ian Bell 2014-15, Joe Root 2015-16, Joe Root Topic. Eligibility of players The England cricket team represents England and Wales. However, under ICC regulations, players can qualify to play for a country by nationality, place of birth or residence, so as with any national sports team, some people are eligible to play for more than one team. ECB regulations state that to play for England, a player must be a British citizen, and have either been born in England or Wales, or have lived in England or Wales for seven years reduced to four years if this period commenced before their 18th birthday. This has led to players who also held other nationalities becoming eligible to play for England. In November 2018, the ECB announced that from 1 January 2019 that the qualification period would be reduced to three years in all circumstances, in line with ICC regulations, of the current squad see above, Jason Roy was born to British parents in South Africa and Keaton Jennings was born in South Africa to a British mother, both had to fulfil residency requirements. In addition, Chris Jordan, Ben Stokes and Tom Curran have British citizenship, having lived in England since their youth, while Owen Morgan also holds Irish citizenship. Curran's younger brother, Sam, was born in the UK, so did not have to have to undergo a qualification period. ICC regulations also allow cricketers who represent associate i.e. non-test playing nations to switch to a test playing nation, provided nationality requirements are fulfilled. In recent years, this has seen Irish internationals Ed Joyce, Boyd Rankin and Owen Morgan switch to represent England, whilst Gavin Hamilton previously played for Scotland, though Joyce, Rankin and Hamilton were later able to re-qualify for and represent the counties of their birth. See also List of England cricket captains List of England cricket team coaches <laughs>